Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So today, uh, we are going to be going through the question and answer session. And again, this is uh, questions that our listeners and our followers have submitted to us. So um, we're going to start answering those, kind of do a tag team on those. Is there anything that we uh, want to talk about from last time or um, anything that's been interesting that has happened in the last couple of weeks? Well, I added uh, added, uh, two new hit samples to the playlist of the hit stuff. I know if you've been following us for a year, we had that hit class out there for a while. We don't have the hit class anymore. Uh, We took all of our classes offline. There was two... uh, too much time, too much time invested, and not enough rewards for for the listeners. So, uh, but the playlists are still there. So I'll put a link. We got two Great. new ones out there. So if you ever wanted to try a sample hit workout, uh, they're uh, easy and free. So Great. You, got, you gotta love easy and free. Uh, yes, everybody loves easy. Do it off and your free. laptop, off your phone, set it up. I've got a picture from my last vacation of me doing it with the laptop sitting on the grill. So. Oh, speaking of vacation and photos, we still need the video of you doing the headstand on the, Oh, it's uh, not a video. I checked. Oh, it's it's just a couple of... And, well... And so I took... There's like, there was like two still. pictures. <laughs> yeah, but they were, they were not very good. I'll, I'll oh, try to find on. that good skill. If you're sticker in the, in the notes to remind me to pull the one of... Because I got one where I'm doing the somersault and I'm about to knock my kid off. So you can use your imagination. Nice, nice. I thought it was a video. I was wrong. My, yeah, my we're going to post it and tag Maria because yeah, Maria's the conversation was, yeah. was with Maria Emmerich um, when we were at KetoCon, so that's kind of funny. Yeah, I was hoping it was a video. It would have been more funny. If it it, it would have been, yeah. Sure. That's sad. Oh. Um, and so my new thing, um, Prime Days, is that what it's called? Uh-huh. Uh, Amazon Prime Days. So they had 23andMe on sale, so I purchased two of them, one for my husband, one for myself. Uh, so I'm pretty excited. Just got the notification this morning that those were in the mail. So, so if you're listening to this, it's too late. The yeah, the deal's over. sorry. But they, it was a great deal. It's the $299 uh, 23andMe, and they had those for $99 yesterday. Yeah, so we'll so. have to do a side-by-side comparison of the cheap version that I have versus the uh, fancy. Well, and I also have a DNA um, that I did through that uh, uh, Genes for Good or whatever that program was. So, um, well, I can compare um, the results that I got because that one it was really hard to read. I, I don't I don't know. I didn't get much out of that one. So yeah. hopefully I do with this one. Um, okay. Well, let's go ahead with the questions because that's really the only thing. So Other than my sous vide, we did talk about, you know, because I'm the gadget queen and I do have a sous vide, have not used it yet. I really want to find some good recipes. Um, So far, I've only had people tell me about steak to do in it. So if you're watching this, even on a replay, and you have something wonderful that you make with a sous vide, shoot me a message, and I'm going to... Steak's got to be where it's at. Yeah, everyone says steak. Did I I order one? I don't know. (laughs) We talked about it, but I don't know if you did. I'll be right back. All right. All right. I'm going to get my phone. I'll check. Because that as well um, on Amazon Prime Days was... All right, you, you start the questions, simple. then I will multitask looking okay. at my Amazon orders. So first question that was it. submitted to us, um, this one I feel like has been uh, very, it's been, in the, it's been in the news, or not in the news, but it's been in conversations a lot. Um, so I thought this one to start us off would, would be good. So um, I'm going to have John start this question, and then I'll answer it as well, but uh, the question is, how do you deal with body shaming? And the reason that I want John to start is because if anybody who has watched us or listened to us, um, John is very fit, he's very athletic, and those of you who are watching on the camera now, you can see that, where I have um, come from a history of not being fit. Um, so I wanted to try to get two perspectives of what that means to us. So body shaming from in general, I never really had a lot of body shaming when I was younger. So at fifth, sixth high school, well, like the early couple of years of high school, uh, definitely had a problem with, uh, I, I, I was actually, I, w- I had my pant size was, was more when I was in high school than it is now. So, mm-hmm. But uh, I, 
it was more of a mental thing for me. Like I did not, uh, didn't uh, feel like, you know, like like I felt like I needed to not wear my shirt when I was, you know. I mean, sorry, I said that backwards. I, I wanted to wear a shirt at the swimming pool. So like that. It, was, it was all like, I don't know if I'd call it by shaming, but recently I've been, you know, I've got kids and, and I was shocked when I was at the pool uh, with, during toddler time and uh, had one of the other mothers who goes to the gym with me, takes my class, uh, actually talk about the fact that she felt like she almost was shamed because she was in shape after her kid. And I was like, totally blew my mind. Like, I, I did not, I'm like, I was like, really, what? Whatever. And I, and I, it, and once you, I guess, have been told about that, you don't realize that body shaming goes both ways. Yeah. For people who are, you know, the, you know, treated differently because they feel like they're overweight versus people who are uh, actually fit, so they put them in a different category. So, uh, so I, I guess so just from my only feedback on that is, is I, I've never really done anything about it one way or the other, but it's definitely opened my mind the last two, three years that uh, it goes both directions. And I've I got to be honest, I had a st- stictona, st- stictoma, whatever that is, where I didn't believe it. Yeah. And uh, so what about you? So, again, um, grew up pretty much uh, from a young age. I was overweight, um, made fun of as a kid, um, you know, friends, family, uh, school, kids, whatever. And I dealt with it that I I turned it into humor, um, which is very typical of most people. Like making fun of yourself? Exactly, exactly. Um, I pretended that it didn't bother me. It was something that I joked with other people about because that was the only way that I could deal with it. Um, but since I've lost weight, um, and again, for those of you who are just joining and have never listened to anything, I've lost somewhere in the neighborhood of 112 pounds. Um, I now get the exact opposite. So even at work, um, I will have people stop me and say, oh my gosh, you're way too thin. You need to stop this. Um, You can't afford to lose any more weight. And I mean, clearly I can. Uh, But yeah, it's it's really different. And now um, I almost go back to using the humor uh, to deal with it again because First of all, I think they're ridiculous that they're saying that I'm too thin because I'm not. Um, I still have plenty uh, of room to improve in in the physical aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I think it's sad that as a society we do that to people. Um, well, I mean, it's I mean, it's people who don't feel comfortable about the comfortable by themselves. Yep. I don't want to say like bullying, but it's pretty close. Yeah, uh, you know, make fun of you because I don't feel bad, and it's it's kind of crazy. Like going back to the example uh, of the toddler time of the pool, I never would have anticipated the fact that somebody would be because they couldn't get their acts together and lose their baby weight that they would like, mm-hmm. you know, treat somebody else differently because they were able to. Uh, it's just kind of mind-boggling to me, but I, I, I I've actually seen it more than once, and I've had my eyes open to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. Well, anyway, hopefully you don't have to deal with that. And if you do, uh, just the fact that we've talked about this, maybe you'll start to realize that if you accidentally do it and don't even realize it, you yeah. open your eyes. Well, and I think for me now, the difference between the two um, is because before I used humor to mask the pain that they, that because somebody was making fun of me, where now I literally am confident enough that it isn't, it isn't painful to me anymore, but I'm just joking because I think you're being ridiculous. So, um, okay. So the next question is revolving around sweeteners. So is eating sweeteners okay when you're doing keto? Uh, well, uh, let me just go ahead and say it doesn't matter if it's okay or not, if it's a trigger for you. So for me, uh, if you make any of those keto bars, like even the uh, some of those ones. If I eat one, I'll just want to eat another and another. So for me, it's a trigger. So I just I just try my best to avoid them. I do put a little stevia sometimes. Uh, if the place that I am getting my coffee doesn't have heavy whipping cream or butter, um, I've got those little stevia drops. They're cinnamon flavored mm-hmm. that I use. But I, I tend to try to stay away from sweeteners myself. But yeah. you're much more knowledgeable about sweeteners. 
Um, well, I don't know about that, but so I have never had um, the issue with sweeteners. I was never, never attracted to sweet foods. Um, so for me, I mean, I put it in my coffee in the morning, and then that's pretty much the only sweetener that I have. So I don't, I don't think it's an issue for everyone. But like John said, if it is an issue for you, um, what I advise people to do is use it to get over a hump. If you are someone who has had an issue with sweeteners, um, if you you know were addicted to the desserts or the candies or whatever, uh, use it to get over a hump. And then after that, you really should dial it back because substituting one addiction for another, regardless if it is an approved, um, you, you probably should actually look at that aspect of it versus just eating a sweetener. So, um, are you here? Let's do this one really fast. Sure. Um, so I think I must have mentioned this before on Facebook or something because the question was uh, eating and eat and ADHD. So I think bef I've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm probably the only person, or I'm, I, this is a question would be solely for me. And to me, it literally just boils down to, I can tell if I fall off the wagon, for lack of a better yep. term, that it, it that mental clarity, a lot of people talk to, talk about it from, from mental clarity, but for me, that is directly linked, linked with my ADHD tendencies um, and even a little bit of my OCD craziness. Um, I, and if, so if I, even, even, even if we're talking about just having more vegetables than usual can throw me to where I can start to notice that my mind wanders uh, and I'm looking at my phone to make sure I ordered my sous vide and, and not, not paying attention to the questions. But, so, uh, so you're saying even the keto approved sweeteners, can, you it, still it, have that, yeah. that problem with your ADD. Yeah, okay. and, and, and I, I actually, I've never done enough research to try to put my finger on it, like, you know, as an in of, you know, in of one experiment. Uh, so for me, it's just easier to avoid it than to try to, like, narrow it down to the type of sweetener or those type of things. Yeah, but, okay. I mean, whether it's a, where it's a, uh, any of the sugar alcohols, I think, can tend to sometimes, but it's that, just that little push over the edge. And do you notice the same, because um, you mentioned sugar alcohol, so the erythritol and xylitol are sugar alcohols mm -hmm. where the stevia and monk fruit are not. So do you notice the same effect from both sides or is it? Uh, I think it's more of a quantity thing. And like I okay. said, I don't know if I've ever done enough to be able to tell one versus the other, but I can tell you like if I have like a bar that has monk fruit in it, mm -hmm. yeah, I can, I can totally, it can throw me out. Okay. And I've never, and I, and unlike you who pricks your finger and stuff, like <laughs> unless I could find some way to get a blood, a continuous blood monitor, uh, there's Hey, I, you can. They're so expensive and. Are they? I haven't yeah. checked into them. But, but anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't track enough, but they, I, but I, yeah, I can tell. Okay. I also, oh, I should ask my wife if she can tell if I've fallen off the wagon by the way I act. <laughs> So speaking of falling off the wagon, one of the one of the questions, and I feel like we get this question all the time. So I'm hoping we have something new. Is is how do you s tips and tricks to stay on track with keto? And you know, for me, it's all about prep. Yeah. Being prepared. Don't go to a pizza party hungry. <laughs> you yeah. Know, that type absolutely. Of stuff. So what? So you you're much more of a. You're usually better <laughs> at answering this question because I'm just like. Well, go f well fast. <laughs> I don't yeah. care. I, I don't have a... Um, so I don't fast very well. And again, this is something that we've talked about quite a bit. Um, I actually recently found out that it may be a connection with um, the thyroid issues that I have. So I'm You're investigating reaching. that. You're I, I'm, I'm investigating that. <laughs> Um, but, but you're just one to blame somebody. No, Dr. Berry actually said that people with Hashimoto's have a more difficult time, even with intermittent fasting. So more to come on that because I am going to research that. Uh, but yeah, so tips and tricks to stay on. Uh, first of all, be prepared. Um, those of, those of us who have things readily available in the refrigerator, um, you know, don't go to the grocery store starving. You know, don't put yourself in a situation where you're at a party and the only thing that you have available is ice cream and cake. Yeah, bring, bring something. Yeah, bring something with you. Um, and then, like, during the week, 
if you have all of your meals prepared and you've got something readily available in your refrigerator, you are less apt to um, not eat those things and go eat something that's less healthy. So that's what I do. Um, I, I mean, just for example, today, I didn't really want to bring what I had for prepared for lunch. So when I got all my stuff gathered this morning to bring in, um, there were some hot dogs and I used uh, uh, Hebrew National. But uh, that, I had some hot dogs in there and I was like, ah, this doesn't sound good either, but it looks better than what I had. So I just grabbed some hot dogs. But that's what I do is I just keep things in the refrigerator, always having something on hand. Um, do you have a go-to fast food restaurant? I know we've talked hmm. about that before. Um, I would have to say in our area, um, I probably would lean to uh, Hardee's and do their low-carb burger. Oh, man. Um, yeah, their monster low-carb burger. Yeah. I've done that. Where I mean, I have gone to McDonald's when I was on the road. I've gone to Culver's before. Um, we don't typically eat out too much, but I would say... We've, yeah, we've talked about this before, but McDonald's has mm -hmm. that. They'll do the McDoubles, which are like, yep. you know, $1.20 or something like that. They'll or do Five it. Guys. They're five Guys is great, too, but that's bun -free. a little bit less of a fast food. That, 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 that is not qualified yeah. fast food <laughs> in my mind anyway. But yeah. Chipotle, if you're going to go to the Five Guys, mm -hmm. Chipotle, uh, I love their city. Yeah, I've never been there. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Anyway, I don't eat out that much, so um, I tend to, to make all of my stuff out. All right. All right. What's next? Uh, so the next question that uh, people actually somebody came to me uh, very recently and asked. Oh, if, if you um, hit your goal, would you stop doing keto? Yeah. I feel like we've talked about that before too. That's the problem with Q and A's is, is is it's not a direct question. We've talked around it, right? Yeah. Um, so, so you say. When you hit your goal, uh, there's not really a lot to do different. Absolutely. <laughs> What do you do different? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, I mean, could you add more vegetables and raise your carbohydrates? Yeah, probably. Um, well, why would you do that? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, it, I think it depends on um, where you start out, right? So somebody like me versus somebody like John, I had a lot of uh, metabolic issues, type 2 diabetes, and in order for me to be able to heal, I needed to be a lot more strict. Um, than, you know, say John did. Now, that doesn't mean that he isn't, but his body metabolically may not have needed to be as strict as mine. Well, so, if you were comparing us, you definitely, I mean, I would definitely fall into the yeah, you definitely keto zone <laughs> versus, I mean, like, I, yeah. I can eat 50 carbs of vegetables and not eat and, yep. not, and stay in ketosis, no problem. Yeah. But it's an activity level thing there, right? So, I mean, all that stuff is you yeah, know, like your all, range yep. and your all individualized. Yep. Yeah, but again, if, if you have hit your goal, and, and that really depends on what your goal is. If it's only weight loss, um, I would say don't do anything different. If it's health, um, maybe you could flux if you wanted to. Um, add a little bit more, uh, I don't know, add more broccoli or, you know what I mean. It, what but, it, why did we go broccoli? I don't know because asparagus. I really, asparagus yeah, asparagus. I do love it, but Brian hates it, oh, so I don't man. get to eat it too much. I could eat asparagus like every day, I think. Yeah. Okay, so this shirt. I'm trying to fix the color balance. It's bugging me. I think that you're the reason why I'm red. Oh, I could be. Between, between could the, be. you're wearing pink, I'm wearing pink, you're wearing red. So <laughs> between the two, we're throwing off the uh, balance. Yeah. So basically, our advice: once you hit your goal, don't do anything different. If you, I mean, if it's working, why change it? I mean, yeah. if you're if you're going past your goal, so let's say for example your goal was weight loss and you started to notice muscle loss, obviously. Well, if you're that, doing that, then you're doing something wrong anyway, yeah. right? I mean. So so I guess my point there was is tweak it so you hit yeah. you hit your range and stay there. Yep. Okay, so this one I am going to direct to John because. Um, well, Hit me. let's face it, he's the athletic one and I'm not. So, question came in, uh, when you're lifting weights, mm -hmm. if you want to have definition in your arms, um, do I do fewer reps with heavy weights or more reps with lighter weights? And is it more beneficial to do full contraction with less weight? So, so 
full disclosure, I teach body pump. <laughs> and body I was pump, just gonna say Body that. pump is a very high rep, very low weight. And uh, they do even market a little bit about the Tony and stuff. Um, I, I would say that it, it, it kind of depends a little bit about your, your body. So for me, I, I do still gain definition doing the low weight high rep, but I, I still firmly believe and I still recommend uh, doing at least one session of heavy lifting a week, uh, or if not two. And the reason is, is because going full range through your bigger muscle, muscles, um, I do think having the higher weight and, and really pushing your body helps stimulate the, the growth. And okay. you can do that by long repetitions, uh, but I find that if you do high rep, low weight, your form starts to break down. And if you are, if you're going to do high weight, you can you can you can uh, do fewer and stick with that form longer. So sounds lame to actually not answer that with a direct <laughs> statement, but I would call it, I would say a mix is is good. And uh, today. Uh, I have I struggle to lift heavy. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Because it's a timing thing. Uh, I I picked up two. I'm mean, basically teaching body pump twice and CX works twice. Oh wow. And then I do a little bit of grit. And from a body perspective, I I feel too much fatigued. And my heart rate monitor broke. Like I'm in my watch, so I'm I'm not tracking my HRV. So until uh -huh. I get my aura ring, uh, I am. I'm I'm doing basically heavy squats and that's it on Fridays. Wow. Okay. Full well, disclosure. I just started lifting again. I took a couple months hiatus. I don't know why. I'm an idiot. I just could not get motivated to do it. And I started on Sunday. On Monday I got to work. I seriously thought that I was going to die. I could not walk. Every time I got up out of my chair, I thought I was going to cry. Remember that um, sweat, I that know. stress sweet spot. You overdid it. Uh, well, Probably and I really... When you overdo it like that, just to like reiterate myself, if you do that, then you're, it takes three to four days to recover. Whereas if you stay in that sweet spot where you're, where you're lifting heavy and you still give yourself you know, just a little bit. I mean, you want to feel it. Don't get me wrong, but you want well, to still be able Well, I did feel walk. like I was that, that when I was doing it, right? And I actually did pretty low weights. I think I did yeah. um, on the squats. I think I did like 50. So, I mean, it wasn't heavy, um, but I just wasn't used to it. And I just, yeah, it was not good yesterday. So, well, a it friend be a of ours. Well, it could thing too, right? Yeah. You're, you're yeah. going down lower and you haven't been doing that lately. So, it could be the bottom of the ranges. Yeah, it was really more my hip flexor, so maybe I had, I don't know, maybe my legs were angled weird. It's but like we sit at desks all day. I know. But a friend of ours, Robert Sykes, uh, I, I watch his live every morning, so if you guys get a chance to do that, 6 a.m. every morning, him and Crystal do a live. But I asked him that question because he's a bodybuilder, and basically he said, suck it up and just keep working out. And that's the only way you're going to get rid of the, uh, the stiffness. Remember, so. he's a huge volume guy. <laughs> he, yeah, he is. He's muscle um, split. So it's huge volume. I did it again last night, and I'm fine today. So he actually was right, but I was questioning whether I was even going to be able to do it. I did not, I did not up the weight, though. So So past show, getting started with weightlifting. Yes. If you're, like, yes. if you're if you, we talked about it for 30 minutes. Yeah, and I, and I was doing the strong lifts 5x5 five five is what I'm doing, so... Um, okay. All right. Can I eat keto if I'm over 60? Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You are never too old um, I think I missed, to start being healthy. I missed that one. Did you catch that one or no? I didn't. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look back in a second. Um, so you're never too old to start being healthy. Um, I would say maybe... At 60, you've had a long time of being unhealthy, probably. So maybe take it a little slower. Um, and, you know, but. So just remember, you are never, I mean, like studies uh, wise, you know, you barely ever get your strength back once you lose it, when you hit that, that age range. So you're be way better off maintaining. Yep. And not oh, losing. yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, as far as like said, starting to eat. We're pretty young, though. 
All right, we'll go with that. <laughs> but I mean, the, you know. Yeah, the it, best time to start was yesterday. Yep. Even better, the next best time is right now. Yeah. Not so the same. It's probably Yoda or something. Probably. <laughs> or you probably just made it up. No, no, it's really the same. <laughs> Somebody tell us. No. Oh well. Anyway. Google it. <laughs> um. So so to actually go a little beyond that, the same person asked, "Is it too late?" If at 60, is it too late to start exercising? No. No. As a matter of fact, I'd even go farther and say it's not too late to start heavy lifting either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, there's, there's you need to be careful. The older, the older you are, the more important it probably yeah. is. Sorry. It doesn't matter your age. The further you are away from good form, the more you have to worry about easing into it. Yeah. It doesn't matter your age. It's more about your form, and if you struggle to sit in a chair and get up out of the chair, yeah. That's and we've done um, some things on that too, right? So we did a whole podcast, um, how to ease into. I have a mother who I am very concerned about all the time. So um, somebody laid out a challenge that if you can get up without using your hands from the floor, was that was that you and I had that conversation? Yeah, I think it was. I wonder if I can do um, that. Sure, I could. You, oh, I'm sure you probably could. Are you keep um, talking? I'm try but it. yeah, so with the um, with the exercise, if if you are not physically able to go to the gym and lift oh, weights, then um, <laughs> okay, I can't. Um, well, that's than I thought it'd be. You know, maybe get a trainer and have the trainer help you um, just until you understand the proper form. And if, you know, I mean, maybe if you've never done it before. Or watch videos, tons of videos. Yeah, YouTube has tons of videos. But we actually did a podcast that you could ease yourself into it. So things that I told my mom, which, again, my mom is older than 60. But, um, you know, just start when you're going to sit down in a chair, just stop right when you feel like you have to put your hands down to help you and then stand up and do that five times each time you go to stand up or sit down. Right. Um, and you're going to start building your thigh muscles. The port of potty hover. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, no, you're not too, too okay. old to start exercising, but you may have to take some other things into consideration. You may have to go much, much slower than someone who's younger than you. You may need assistance from a professional. If you decide to go to the gym, um, I wouldn't recommend that an older person just go start, you know, on a Smith machine by themselves. But you are never too old. Almost every gym will will have a, will show you how to use the machines. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, if you can't afford a trainer, almost every gym that you go to will actually give you one free, um, not really a training session, but they'll walk you through how to do the machines and give you some advice. So definitely can do that and there's planet fitness everywhere they're ten dollars a month so we almost don't even have an excuse to not do a gym anymore right except me because i hate them and i have a gym in my basement so that's where i do it <laughs> full disclosure <laughs> now we're going to go so i think you should go there come take my classes yeah yeah that's true yeah i i definitely see for you it's funny like completely different like group fitness helps me because it's, it's like I see the same people we hold each other accountable that type that group fitness thing I, I it's yeah, really the accountability I like and I think I think that I still haven't gotten over that fat girl scared yeah, mentality no, I never had that problem. yeah I mean just going there I feel very intimidated and I don't understand all the grunting I'm gonna be honest I I, I I understand while you're actually doing the the exercise yeah. that you may grunt, but there are guys at our gym who just walk around grunting. I, I don't know if this is a language that you guys have that you're speaking to each other in or what, but I don't understand it and it is weird to me. So it, it's also unusual. Our goals gym doesn't have a lot of that versus a lot it usually goals a goals gym. Which is weird because this kind of I I went to the Golds. That's where it was in Morton. in my whole town. No. 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 Gotcha. So anyway, pure pure has got a little bit more of that. But. Yeah. No. I did peeking. Um. But anyway, so I I do it at home. I probably should do it at a gym. I probably would be more faithful if I did it at a gym. But yeah. I just can't get past that. So until I can, I'm gonna do it at home. So. All right, so let's make sure we got all the live questions because we're, we're going to run out. We've got a few more emailed ones, so I think we can get to. Okay. 
who can I follow research to re follow slash research to better understand keto? Okay, so my newfound favorite is Dr. Ken Berry. And you, you were really crushing on him lately. I am. I do. I do have a crush. Um, him and his wife, Nisha, she's a nurse, and uh, they do lives all the time. He is always putting out content. He has YouTube channel. The guy... Is harsh. He, he oh, is harsh, I mean, like, and that's why harsh, I love him. He's, like, very blunt. He is very blunt, so if you aren't somebody <clears throat> who can handle that, mm -hmm. I love it and I gravitate to it. And I don't do socials, so I don't yeah. watch him. So. But he is... There are other doctors who will come out and say that, you know, doing keto is is healthy and they go against your typical, um, but he kind of goes even a step further and says, you know, I mean, he's, he's very blunt about it. The stuff that we were taught in medical school, the stuff that I did in my practice early on is garbage and you need to stop listening to it. So... Um, he, he's, he's my new favorite. Fire and brimstone. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, there is Dr. John Lemansky, and I'll put his name in the show notes because it's hard to spell, but he is really good as well. Uh, there is, um, of course, you know, your, your old time ones, Jimmy Moore has a couple of books out, uh, Keto Clarity and, uh, Cholesterol Clarity. Those are really good to help you understand what keto is or what um, is important with your uh, cholesterol. Dave Feldman is great. Ivor Cummings is wonderful. Um, Colonel Blueprint's got a whole book and series. And oh, yeah, Mark, Mark Sisson. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, he's got some really good content. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head, but that's a pretty good list, and it gives you a pretty broad range, um, you know, from, from understanding cholesterol numbers and what things are important to understanding what keto is and how eating a low-carb, high-fat diet will help. So, All right. Um, All right, so hit me with this last one because it's, uh, it's, like, it's a question okay. co close to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can't answer this because I fine. didn't do this. But, um, I, okay, so they said that they really want to start doing keto but they just cannot give up their beer, what do you suggest? So, first <laughs> up, I'd like to say I totally agree. <laughs> because, I don't know, man, I went through a while where I did not like beer, and I don't know when. I much like coffee. Believe it or not, in college and high school, I never drank coffee. It wasn't until I was sitting in a, in a corporate office space for a while to where I started to actually, I don't know, they what did I say, acquired taste, right? So beers was, was very difficult for me. I mean, there are, you know, gluten-free beers and stuff, but they still almost all have carbs in them. Yep. So for me, I switched, uh, I switched basically to kombucha from a, if I really want that taste. Which is non-alcoholic. Which is non-alcoholic. <laughs> so you don't know. Yeah, yeah, No, well, it's, well, it's different, yeah. right? So there's, there's two reasons why you drink. One is to take the edge off and actually right. get the alcohol version of it. And one is, if you are actually missing the taste of beer, right. well, I think kombucha is, although it's not very beer-related, can get you close. There's also a couple, mm -hmm. like, Zevia products that are similar to the fake beer they're more oh, like, really? Well, they're more like root beer, but... Oh. <laughs> um, but they get closer. And in uh, you can put... Uh, so if you're going to, like, get, like, a root beer knockoff, whatever, whichever brand you prefer, you can put a shot of uh, the apple cider vinegar in there. And that'll oh, make wow. it taste more like a beer. Oh, wow. It's weird. I know what you're telling. I know right now you're thinking that sounds ludicrous, <laughs> but... Just try it. So if, if it's you're a beer the drink, flavor, if but let's beer. face it, most people do not miss the flavor they miss. Okay, so if what you're drink. missing is the um, the liquid encouragement, <laughs> uh, then I think you need to switch to vodka. Yeah. Uh, same disclosures. We've talked about alcohol before and how your body processes it first, so you don't want to mirror it with meal. You're much better off if you're really drinking to drink and get that feeling than... Uh, you know, do it, you know, skip a meal, skip skip your dinner, enjoy your drinks, 
get yeah. fleshy, and then uh, be back to the very where we started. Prep, prep yourself because that's that's the best time to fall off the wagon. It's not the best time. That's the, the easiest. easiest time to fall off yep. the wagon is when you're 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 already uh, kind of in that mode. So don't bear, belly up to the bar with your old partner friend <laughs> and end up buying the. Uh, uh, onion rings or something stupid like that because you'll definitely regret it in the morning. Yeah.